Howdy everybody, Scott here. Today is April 4th, it's my birthday, and I'm making another video about the best films of 2001. If you'd like to program for yourself a two-week uh, 2001 film festival, watching one new 2001 movie per night, uh, you uh, can't go wrong with a lot of these. Um, some of them you've probably already seen before, it's very likely, but maybe there's a few you haven't and you'd like to check them out. Um, so we left off with Monsters, Inc., which was a Pixar movie in the last video, and now I'd like to talk about Joel and Ethan Coen's offering that year, The Man Who Wasn't There, a, a movie uh, set in the 40s, I believe. Uh, it's in black and white. Interesting fact about this, they weren't able to secure international um, distribution rights in a few different countries because the movie was in black and white. Um, they demand color movies uh, over there too bad for them. Um, so they actually shot the movie in color and then converted it to black and white for most of the countries that would allow it, including here. Um, they did a good job of it, too, because it's great looking. It's a great looking movie. Uh, the main character is Billy Bob Thornton. He is a barber. Um, he works in uh, the, uh, he works in the uh, uh, shop of his brother-in-law, um, Michael Badalucho, I believe. I, I can't remember how you say his name. He was on The Practice, that uh, uh, lawyer show, The Practice. Anyways, made a, married to Frances McDormand, of course, who is, um, you know, uh, a frequent uh, co-star in one of the uh, Coen Brothers movies because she's married to Joel. They weren't co-directed as uh, uh, as directors, the both of them, at this point. They didn't get that until The Lady Killers until, until 2004. But, of course, they were still very much in charge of all aspects equally, as they always have been in every movie they've made since they were kids. Um, so, uh, uh, Francis McDormand works for James Gandolfini in the department store, and um, uh, the uh, the Billy Bob Thornton character suspects his wife of having an affair with her. So, uh, sorry, the James Gandolfini character of having an affair with her. Uh, so he uh, decides to blackmail him uh, so that he can buy into a new fangled dry cleaning business, something new and exciting. Dry cleaning is done with chemicals, no water. You know, you don't damage the uh, clothes with water and soap like you normally would. Um, John Polito, who of course was in Miller's Crossing and uh, Barton Fink, and a couple of the Coen Brothers movies, is the uh, guy that ropes him into this deal. Naturally, the blackmail scheme goes awry. There's a murder. There's all kinds of legal problems. Tony Shalhoub plays a lawyer. Um, Richard Jenkins is in it as well. Um, a fine movie from them. Uh, there were a couple of movies that they made that I wasn't all that crazy about. I know The Big Lebowski has a lot of fans, but I'm not like the biggest fan of that movie. Nor am Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Um, the Man Who Wasn't There, of course, is, is a movie that I like quite a bit, so that's why it's here. Um, the next movie I'd like to talk about is Kate and Leopold. This is a, kind of a romantic comedy with a sci-fi twist. Um, the main character is played by Meg Ryan. Um, she's a modern-day New York gal who suddenly gets a visit from a guy who was born centuries earlier. Hugh Jackman is a nobleman um, from, I think the 17 or 1800s, I forget exactly, it's been a long time since I've seen the film, um, he is uh, he was accidentally transported to the present day when he fell through a wormhole that was discovered by Meg Ryan's ex-boyfriend, who is played by Liev Schreiber, um, who went back in time to sort of take some pictures and just gather data after he discovered this wormhole, but then Hugh, Hugh Jackman follows him to the present, and then he's got to deal with modern-day society, including how to court, properly court a lady. Um, it's a really funny movie, uh, and Brecken Meyer is in his well, uh, I think she's. Uh, I think he's like um, Meg Ryan's roommate. I, I, I forget exactly. Anyway, uh, a really fun movie. Hugh Jackman. He's great in this. Um, it's one of the be better Meg Ryan comedies out there. Um, is directed by James Mangold, who went on to do The Wolverine with. Uh, with Hugh Jackman, and will probably do the next Wolverine movie as well. He also directed 310 to Yuma. He directed Identity. He directed um, a bunch of movies. He's, he's quite the uh, jack-of-all-trades when it comes to genre. Most of his movies I enjoy very much. I'd also like to point out that um, one of the writers, though probably uncredited on the movie, was a woman named Karen Moncrief, uh, who I actually got to meet. Um, some years ago. Um, she, uh, her mother was like a friend of my dad's, so I got to meet uh, the both of them at one point, and she was telling me a little bit about this project. She did a rewrite on the script, the rewrite that got the movie The Green Light. So what you're seeing uh, on screen is basically her script, or her rewrite of the script, which is great. She went on to write and direct a couple of movies, and I saw them too, and they were good too. So um, you might hear about them in future videos. Um, the next movie uh, most of you are very familiar with, Christopher Nolan's breakthrough film Memento, which came out here in Chicago in early 2001. Uh, Guy Pierce, of course, the main character. He's got a little memory problem. He's looking for the person who is responsible for the death of his wife. Carrie Ann Moss uh, is uh, perhaps helping him, maybe not. Joe Paltiano is a guy named 
Teddy, he is also maybe helping him, or perhaps not. He's not really sure. He's taking photographs and trying to remember, uh, write people's names on them and what their importance is to his little case. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's all quite complicated. I'd also like to point out that when Christopher Nolan cast the doctor uh, in a couple of flashbacks, he cast the comedian Thomas Lennon, who's now on the new... Um, um, odd couple with uh, with Matthew Perry. He then cast Thomas Lennon in, as the doctor in The Dark Knight Rises, the one who uh, gives Bruce Wayne the bad news about the lack of cartilage in his knee. Uh, and Nolan, I think, insists that it's the same guy, the same doctor in both movies, so that's kind of cute. Um, the next movie I'll talk about, one of the very best movies that come out this year, highly underappreciated, I felt, was one a film directed by Sean Penn called The Pledge. Um, Sean Penn directed a couple of movies uh, prior to this, uh, The Crossing Guard with Jack Nicholson uh, and um, uh, yes, um, he, all, he directed uh, Into the Wild, of course, with Emile Hirsch. Um, the Pledge also stars Jack Nicholson as a cop who basically retires at the beginning of the film, but before he does, he um, is investigating the case of a murdered girl, and he decides to carry on with the investigation either, even though he's retired and he has no business doing that. Um, Robin Wright is a woman he befriends, uh, in this town where he's moved to in the hopes of ensnaring the killer and looking for clues to his identity because the killer operated and abducted kids in that area. Uh, big cast in this movie including Aaron Eckhart, Sam Shepard, uh, Tom Noonan, um, just a lot of, a lot of uh, pretty prominent names in the film. Really, really good movie. Um, the style, the visual style of the movie reminded me a lot of Michael Mann, uh, you know, with Heat and The Insider and films like that uh, when I saw it. It's a really good film. Um, next, I'd like to talk about Richard Linklater's film Waking Life, which he shot with digital cameras around Austin, Texas, uh, and then had animated over in kind of crude ways, but also very creative and inventive ways, not strictly speaking within the, within the lines of the characters or the environments, but rather being a little bit more free and allowing buildings to kind of float around in the sky and objects to move in the frame in a way they normally wouldn't. Um, he used a lot of his cast from uh, Slacker, his uh, first uh, feature film. Um, a lot of the people, a lot of the locals who were in that movie are in Waking Life as well. The main character is played by Wiley Wiggins, who was um, the kid in Dazed and Confused. Uh, the main kid who uh, is an incoming freshman uh, in uh, the summer of 76 and hangs out with uh, some of the uh, older guys at the school for the night. Um, he's just basically having a series of dreams in which he encounters people that are having deeply philosophical conversations. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a good one too. Very interesting. Probably not everyone's cup of tea. It's not, you know, a movie with a conventional story, but uh, it's, it's something different, which I like. Um, then there's Training Day, a Training Day which uh, couldn't be called unconventional, I'd say, but uh, is a really good uh, thriller. Um, Denzel Washington, uh, man, he was scary in this movie. He plays a, a rather uh, volatile uh, police detective named Alfonso, uh, who, um, who is uh, uh, giving uh, Ethan Hawke the lay of the land in his first day as a uh, plainclothes detective, basically. He's, Ethan Hawke's looking to join uh, the unit that Denzel's in charge of. Um, uh, this movie was directed by Antoine Fuqua, who also recently did The Equalizer with Denzel, which I haven't seen, so I couldn't attest to its uh, quality. Um, but Training Day is, is by far the best movie that he's directed uh, of the ones that I've seen. Um, so yeah, Denzel, he's a uh, you know, bit of a hard ass, and he's, uh, he's, he's, he's got a philosophy. You know, He may not be uh, uh, that great of a guy, <laughs> but he's got a philosophy about how the world works and how you should deal with it in a position like him. He's like, you don't go out and, and, and deal with the petty crime. You know, uh, let the garbage men take out the garbage. We are professional anglers. We handle the big fish. I'm combining a few of his different quotations here, but he has a lot of, lot of great dialogue in the movie, and I was very pleased to see him win Best Actor for this movie, because I thought he was terrific in it. Um, yeah, another really great cast in that one as well. You've got guys like Peter Green, uh, Dr. Dre, uh, uh, Eva Mendez is in it. Uh, yeah, really good cast. Um, and finally, uh, another Best Picture nominee. Actually, how many have I talked about? Probably not that many. I think that Lord of the Rings was nominated that year. Um, what else was nominated? I can't even remember. Uh, <laughs> oh, Beautiful Mind. That's right. But Moulin Rouge basically was a, nominee, was a nominee for Best Picture that I thought was really great, which is odd because I haven't really liked any of Baz Luhrmann's films except for this one. Um, Moulin Rouge, of course, uh, takes place in Paris in 1899. 
and uh, it's uh, Ewan McGregor as a writer come to uh, the city to uh, experience the uh, life and art and he meets uh, the courtesan Nicole Kidman who works at the club that is run by Harold Zidler uh, who's played by Jim Broadbent uh, an extremely lively uh, uh, and, and energetic movie edited to within an inch of its life it's um, something that annoys me about a lot of movies if they're cut too rapidly but this one since it's so infused with music works a lot better than I think a lot of his other films um, and uh, yeah I, it was just a joy to watch I mean I was just on a high watching this movie it was great um, so those are uh, another seven recommendations for 2001 hope you've enjoyed this video hope that if you haven't seen a few of these you will take the time to check them out I think you would enjoy them greatly um, and we'll be back of course with 2002 so I hope you'll, you'll uh, tune in for that when that video goes up in a few days uh, don't forget I've got a Facebook page link uh, below as well as the link to the playlist where all these videos are located thank you very much for watching and as always I appreciate your comments and your time later <laughs>